select the keys to ride a shuttle. This vehicle is about to go 17,000 miles per hour. Enjoy your ride. We have a go for main engine start. Three engines up and ready. Three, two, one, zero. Booster ignition and liftoff of Discovery. Blazing a trail to scientific discoveries aboard Space Station. The shuttle ride was uh, very exciting, nothing that I could quite ever imagine. Space Shuttle Discovery is rolling into a heads down position, putting it on course for the International Space Station. I grew up just watching the shuttle. Tried to see it launch when I was really young in Florida, but the weather kept our family from being able to see it. Uh, followed it when I was a high school teacher with my students, and then was lucky enough to be hired and to, to join a really great crew. When I found out I was selected, of course, I was very excited. And, you know, we all see what astronauts do for a short period of time, and that's when we fly in space, but I had no idea what um, the training would be like. You know, we've spent many hours in the neutral buoyancy lab back in Houston with uh, very capable divers, and it's just really neat to see everything come together. I think the most important thing is all of those simulations and training events actually prepare you for exactly what you're doing. Before the launch, we were really focused, uh, thinking over the last lessons that you've learned. And then, once we got on orbit, you have the mindset of, let's really just get this job done and do it very well. You lose all track of time. Uh, you don't know which meal you're eating sometimes because really you're just going from um, work event to work event to make sure that the mission is carried out successfully. The hardest thing for me so far is actually just doing some of your morning operations. As you can see, my hair is really long and curly, and uh, you can't really wash your hair in space. Uh, we have this camping shampoo that you run through, and then you kind of comb it through your hair and you try to towel it off. But uh, it's much easier for me to take a shower on Earth. But uh, today, we were doing a lot of transfer, and that is so much easier than on Earth. Um, in fact, yesterday, my friend Naoko moved almost three tons of equipment, all with her legs, uh, through the International Space Station. Well, some with her hands, too. But in space, it's much easier to be a mover. As you can see, floating is, is probably one of my favorite things, and I wish that I could float all the time. In fact, I have a three-year-old daughter back on Earth, and uh, she asked her grandparents, how does mommy do that? And uh, I hope she's not trying it at home. <laughs> but floating is one of my favorite things. Looking out the window, uh, I've had a chance to watch the crescent moon. It's a waning crescent. Looked at some uh, really cool constellations, and then just being in the cupola window, or any window that you can get into and looking at the beauty of the earth, um, it's amazing. Although I didn't grow up on the West Coast, I spent a good chunk of my life out there going to college and uh, teaching. And we came up over Portland, Oregon, and we could pick it out, and then we came down through the Rockies, and then we even came over our, our new home in Houston, and it's just looking at the earth never gets old. I knew that I wanted to teach or, or do something to give back uh, to society. And so I went back and got my teaching certification at uh, Central Washington University. Then I went off and taught high school at Vancouver School District at Hudson's Bay High School. When I was teaching astronomy, one of my students said, how do you go to the bathroom in space? So, you know, like a good teacher, I said, well, I don't know the answer to that question, but you cook it up, and I'm definitely going to look it up because you stumped me. And I looked it up that night, and at the same time, they had posted that educators could become astronauts. And uh, so I had the answer to my student's question, but I also got an answer to a dream that, that I had for a long time, and so I applied to the astronaut position. The educator astronaut is not a teacher from space. They're an integral part of the crew. I'll be on the flight deck for Essen and Tree, and then um, I'll be doing a lot of transfer on the mission, as well as um, working the shuttle robotic arm, and I'll be the IVA, or the intravehicular crew member for the three spacewalks. So I can't believe that 200 years ago we didn't really know a lot about the West, and yet we didn't. And, and 
this idea that we're going to send off a group of people. We don't know if they're going to come back. We don't know what they're going to find along the way. Maybe they'll find the Northwest Passage. You know, they had this a lot of high hopes, um, but they went off armed with education. They went off armed with some pretty cool tools for the time period. And so I just see that we're kind of at the same point, and we want to know what's out there. We're not going to be able to do this alone, and we've got partnerships from around the world that we're all looking out there together. How are we going to get there the best? How are we going to get there safely? How are we going to keep this vision alive? It's kind of like back to the St. Louis, you know, we're at the gateway. We just got to get going.